Gaza has become a hellhole of human suffering. Humanitarian organizations that have operated worldwide for decades say they have never witnessed a more terrible situation. It is essential, essential, that the Biden administration enforce its terms to get humanitarian aid delivered where it needs to go. When people are starving, patience is not a virtue. It needs to be said, Mr. President, that getting humanitarian aid into Gaza is only half the battle. The other half, and the more dangerous half, is distributing the aid once it is inside of Gaza. It doesn't do any good if you can't safely transport the food to the people who are starving. The organization that is prime, the primary distributor of assistance within Gaza has been an entity called the United Nations Relief Works Agency, or known by, the, by its shorthand, UNRWA. In late January, the Netanyahu government alleged that up to 14 of UNRWA's 13,000 employees participated in the horrific October attacks against Israel. These are, of course, very serious allegations, and UNRWA has taken them seriously. All agree that any individuals involved in that horror must be held accountable. And even though the Netanyahu government has not provided UNRWA with the underlying evidence, UNRWA immediately fired the alleged perpetrators. The UN Secretary General also took swift action and announced the launch of a full and independent investigation led by the UN's highest investigative body into the allegations. And that is ongoing. At the same time, President Biden suspended all US contributions to UNRWA pending the outcome of that investigation. A number of other countries followed suit, as did the EU. But Mr. President, since then, two things have changed. First, the Netanyahu government has not shared the underlying evidence with UNRWA, nor, as reported by the Wall Street Journal, has it shared the raw evidence with the United States. In fact, I urge every one of my Senate colleagues to read the, classi the classified report prepared by the DNI. And I especially urge my colleagues to read the intelligence assessments about the many other claims the Netanyahu government has made against UNRWA. And there have been many. I am sure that many of my colleagues are unaware of the fact that UNRWA has long provided both Israel and the United States with the names and identities of all its employees for full review and vetting. Now, Israel, of course, has far more extensive intelligence capabilities than UNRWA, but apparently they have never previously raised complaints about any of the UNRWA employees on the lists given to them. The EU and many countries that initially suspended their financial support for UNRWA have since restored their contributions because they have acknowledged the desperation in Gaza and the irreplaceable nature of UNRWA. In fact, even prior to these allegations, UNRWA had asked the UN Secretary General to convene an independent review group to assess whether UNRWA is doing everything within its power to ensure neutrality. So again, UNRWA in Gaza is an organization with a staff of 13,000 people that is delivering essential life-sustaining aid to over 2 million people. And what the EU and these other countries that have restored UNRWA funding recognize that it is inhumane to cut off assistance to 2 million people because of the atrocious alleged acts of 14. Punish the 14. Don't punish 2 million innocent Gazans.